the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. Welcome, everyone, to episode 135 of The Daily Mother Swole. Mother swollen, swollen and rolling, driving while gaining. Swollen. Staying on top. Staying on top. I told you yesterday, I was saying in my Snapchat, if you haven't watched a bodybuilding competition, you should watch it. It was awesome because The Rock popped in for a speech, apparently Seven Bucks Productions, The Rock's. A production company has partnered with CBS Sports, and CBS Sports is going to host the Olympia next year. They're going to stream it. So that's a huge – they didn't talk about it as much. They're like, wow, that's amazing. That is bigger than you could ever imagine for bodybuilding. That's huge mainstream. That's huge mainstream. Bodybuilding has always been – the Olympia has been on pay-per-view. It's kind of been off. Like the graphics are like funky. I was shocked that Amazon was doing it. I thought it was brilliant on Amazon's part. And obviously, what happened is Amazon jumped in, and you can tell probably since Amazon got a taste, I bet CBS and someone wanted to up the ante a little bit and was like, holy shit, if they're interested, let's jump on this. So a lot of times it takes a one big name to you know, sniff it out a little bit, and then everyone else is like, ooh, I want some too, and they jump in, and you know, it's, it's got to start somewhere. But it's going to be totally cool next year. Anyway... I want to talk not so much about who won and the differences because we were just talking about before uh, I signed on officially, we were talking streaming uh, about, you know, who won and, you know, who should have won, you know, was it the right decision? But that's really for the judges that have a lot of experience to say, you know, we're, it's hard for us to say, see that when we're on TV or when we're watching it from TV and they're, they have tons of experience, they watch this stuff all the time so they can see the glaring differences, things that we wouldn't even notice right away. That being said, Staying on top, we had a couple like repeats. I think it was like the figure, um, Olympia repeated the two twelve uh, flex, flex um, won it again, and now it was Phil Heath for the Mister Olympia. So you see these people that are winning multiple years in a row, four years, five years in a row, six years in a row for for Phil Heath. Flex Lewis looks amazing. Uh, flex Lewis for the Mister Olympia, the two twelve. And I think the figure she wanted again, that was her second year in a row. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about winning and let's talk about staying on top and maintaining. Like I said, if you're winning multiple years, you know it down to a science. You have this locked down. You know what you're doing. You know exactly what your body needs. You know exactly what your body needs to do. And it's the just going through it again. If you won last year, you have to be beaten. So you just come in the same way and challenge everyone else to try to get better. But here's what it takes to be on top. It's not so easy just to, you know, just to get there. It's one thing. But to stay on top, think about what these people go through. And I want you to translate this into your own life. I want you to translate this into your own fitness. This goes to going, getting up every day, going to the gym, then going to work, you know, whatever your routine is. They, these guys and ladies are consistent beyond belief. They are absolutely just amazingly maxed out with what they're, with the effort and, you know, just the dieting, the, the cardio, the extreme, you know, fat loss and water, you know, depletion, the carb depletion, the sleep schedule, the travel schedule, the posing routines, the practice. It's a lot more than just lifting and going home and eating. They're posing. They're, there's a whole strategy behind it. So to be consistent, to be dedicated, to be motivated, and the discipline, these are all aspects. It's not just to get there. It's to stay on top. Just think about what it takes to maintain that. And Phil Heath, for example, once you get to the top, and he won the Olympia, if you don't know, for the sixth straight time, To get to the top is one thing. You might be struggling to get there for 10, 15 years. Once you get there, to maintain that for year one, and then the doubt and trying to maintain it, everyone's gunning for you for year two, and then you establish yourself, and then year three, four, five, six, it doesn't get easier. 
it gets to the point where people are waiting for you to lose. They're waiting for you to fuck up. They're waiting for their opportunity. They're also studying you and seeing what you're doing and then getting better. They're hungry. They're trying to get to the top. You have to be even hungrier than you were when you first won to stay at the top because if you stop being hungry and motivated for a moment, that's when you start to lose. That's when you start to lose because everyone else is gunning for you. But what's your motivation now? You reached it already. Your motivation is to stay the best. That's not always that's not always the best way. Like a lot of times these people internalize these negative comments and these things just to motivate themselves because once you get to the top, it's you know, where do you go from there? And Arnold is a famous quote from Pumping Iron. He goes, The wolf at the top of the hill is never as hungry as the wolf climbing the hill. But when he wants the food, it's there. So that's what that's what Arnold said in Pumping Iron. But it's true. It's true. When you're at the top, you're never quite as hungry as someone who's at the bottom trying to work their way up. So to be able to do this for multiple years, to repeat even once, do two in a row, to do five in a row, do six in a row, it's just absolutely incredible, the discipline, the motivation, the dedication, the consistency, being able to output that with resistance. You're overloading your body. You're putting your body through stress from eating and dieting and mental strain. It's just their lifestyle. It's the way they work, but just to the level that they do it and their ability to do it at the top to win. I'm not talking about being a competitor in the Olympia. I'm not talking about, you know, winning a show at some point during the year. I'm talking about winning the being the best in the entire in the entire absolute organization in the world. The number one bodybuilder in the world and to do it over and over and over. It's like sports when you repeat championships to be the best over and over and over again. It's just absolutely incredible. You have to be healthy. You have to be injury free. You tear your knee, you hurt something, you're done. You can't train. It's not like, you know, you're playing baseball and you hurt your knee and your team's still playing and winning games without you, hopefully. No. You're freaking you're you if you get hurt in bodybuilding, you get hurt and your muscle depletes and then you you might not be able to make it back in time. So it's just so much more of a it's the individual sport. Like you get hurt, you're done. And it's not that, okay, I injured my shoulder and now I can play tennis again. I can swing the racket as hard as I did before. If you're bodybuilding, you lose time. You can't just get that back. You can't. It's so hard to build muscle. It takes a lot more to build muscle than it is to rest like a broken bone, for example. Like just all the aspects that have to go into it before you heal. There's a lot more that goes into it. It's less. It's a skill, but it's also a physical development. It's not just like a reaction for a sport, it's there's a lot more of creation on a cellular level that your body has to do for bodybuilding. Eating right all the time, uh, the training, the intensity of the training. So it's really a lot about self awareness. You know, it's about knowing your body, knowing exactly what you have to do and when you have to do it in order to get it done, in order to get the job done, in order to make it to, you know, to to, to the finals, in order to make it in the shape that you are. It's resting well. It's doing your yoga and flexibility. These guys have posing routines. They're flexible. Some positions I know that people work out, you go to turn, do like a bicep pose. You know, there's some pose that I can barely hit just from like flexibility. And these guys are, you know, so much bigger than me and they're rotating all the way around. They're very flexible. They're very flexible. They're not just meat, you know, just stiff sticks. They look like it, but they're a lot of times very, very flexible because they practice their posing, they stretch, they get deep tissue massages all the time. So the recovery, the variety, imagine working out for 10, 20, 30 years, your body gets used to most of the stuff that you've done. Yeah, posing's exhausting. Keeping your body tense for that long, posing helps bring out a lot of definition, dries out the, the muscles inside, it's like a sponge. Brings out a lot of hardness in the muscle. But the variety, your body has experienced so many different things. How do you shock it? How do you develop new muscle growth? Very challenging, especially when you've been exposed to that many elements throughout your career. The timing. I think what I'm going to finish with is the timing. Is the timing with everything. The timing in bodybuilding is more than just, okay, I'm eating, I'm eating lower carbs up into a show. It's a timing for the day before. It's a timing the day of the final judging. It's the timing of your, your meals, your whole programming, your weight programming, your training, your every aspect of your programming, what weights you use, what time you show up to the competitions, uh, what water, you know, how much water you drink, how long before, when do you eat your carbs during the show, 
all these different aspects of timing, not to mention age. Age has to do with timing. There's so many different plots and points on this graph that it's almost mind-blowing when you try to cover them all, what a bodybuilder and what a guy at this top of the level has to go through, what they have to go through. And everyone's different. Uh, Tom, you were saying, didn't Arnold eat pancakes before the show? Yeah, probably. But when you're dieting down hard, these guys are eating rice cakes and carbs in the back, you know, so you get that vascular pump, some probably eating candy bars and stuff like that. Everyone's different. Everyone's got their different strategy, what works for their body. It's like anything else. Some people probably get nervous. They, they eat anything, they'll throw up or feel sick. Other people probably can eat fine because they're, you know, everyone's different. Everyone's different when, you know, some, let's say NBA players like to listen to music before the show. Some people like quiet. Some people like to rage and freak out. Everyone kind of gets motivated and focused differently. So some people like to joke around. Some people like to be quiet and, you know, solemn in the corner. Everyone's different in that respect. And the challenge is to figure out what's right for you and what your timing is and how you can make or, or bring timing into your advantage and use it for your advantage and, and organize your life and organize your strengths and play to your strengths because it's all about playing to your strengths. It's all about making sure that you are focusing and delivering on your best abilities. And that's what I want you to take away from this little preview, you know, this little, the, the, the swole today is not so much that, hey, bodybuilding is a bodybuilding show. We're talking about the bodybuilding show, but I want you to take away that it's all about your strengths. And I want you to think about that today, the rest of Sunday, and we'll, we'll take that theme into the beginning of this week, is playing up to your strengths. Oftentimes in bodybuilding and oftentimes in life, we talk about working on weaknesses. Like, oh, that's a weak area. I'm, I'm going to focus on working on that and improving that. And yeah, with bodybuilding physically, like if you have smaller legs or smaller deltoids or triceps, yeah, you got to work on that to bring it up for the aesthetic appeal for judging. But also you have to play to your strengths. And a lot of these poses and a lot of these things, some of these bodybuilders, they win on certain poses because that's their strength. And it's so much of a strength, it overpowers other ones. You need in life to play to your strengths. And more recently, I'm doing this. It's okay to work on weaknesses. It's okay to work on things to be better overall. But it's also very important to understand when you're focusing energy on things that you'll never be good at. And a lot, I think a lot of people have a tough time admitting and understanding that they'll never be good at it. For me, and I'm learning this, I've kind of known this my whole life, it's cleanliness. And it's not that I'm dirty. I don't have like a dirty butt crack or anything like that. But it's keeping things neat. Now, I clean. I swear I clean. And then it's just messy so soon after. And it's not dirty. There's a big difference between dirty. It's just stuff. I have like index cards everywhere. I have just stuff here. You know, I have like an iPhone 6S box that's been sitting here. Like I could have put this in a drawer. I just haven't. And I'm probably going to be like describing it, showing you this, and I'll probably put it down and then it'll stay there for another couple days or a week or a month. Like I just have stuff around. It's almost for me. Like I don't, I almost feel like I don't have the brain space and the conscious attention span to care and to do anything with it. I almost feel like it's a struggle. It's such a struggle for me to do that. It's much easier for me just to keep on going and moving, getting stuff done. Now that doesn't mean that I don't clean. I clean, but I just, it tends, I just tend to leave stuff out and tend to keep moving and getting stuff done rather than spend time like wiping you know, a fucking countertop and, you know, oh, is this lined up properly? The thing is, I know where stuff is. I get stuff done. It's just interesting when I just relax about it and realize I don't have to be super clean. I can just get my stuff done and I get it done and it's efficient. And there was an article recently and people have been talking about it. It's kind of getting, I guess, viral in some areas or some people have been seeing it more recently that there's a study, I forget where it was, maybe it was in Europe, that if you're messier, like if you have a messy desk, you're messier, you stay up late and you swear a lot. It was like strongly correlated to like a high IQ and like genius levels. And well, I am up all hours. I don't sleep enough. I swear a lot and I'm messy. So I'm a genius and I'll, and I'll leave you with that. But it's just interesting to think about that. I'm definitely creative brained. I'm definitely not going to be like, you know, freaking out if there's a piece of dirt on the floor For me, mentally, it's just there are a lot of things that are worth more my time than to spend just poking around, you know, putting 
like clothes away. I do laundry, it's clean clothes. Why am I going to fold them and hang them all up when I'm just going to take them down? It's just they're out of the way. They're It's done. I don't know. I just don't waste my brain space on those things. It's just I've learned that it's more stressful to try to get some of that stuff done than it is just to keep on moving forward and doing what I'm strong at and what my strengths are. So it's one thing if it's interfering with your life and it's affecting your productivity, but if it's not, it could just be just the way you are and how your brain works. And yeah, you can get them made or whatever, but at the same time, it's, you know, whatever. Play to your strengths. Do your thing. Do you. But find out what those strengths are, play to your strengths, and then keep on pushing. But remember, and that's going to help you stay at the top. You can work on your weak points, but play to your strengths and be consistent. Keep moving forward. And find your sweet spot, find your sweet spot so you can stay on top of your game for years and years. So once you get there, you have to stay hungry. You have to find that discipline and keep pushing because once you get to the top or once you keep on, you know, none of us are really technically getting to the top. We're not winning a championship, for example, so there's no necessarily end point. But keep on looking for that better mint of yourself. Keep on working to your strong points. Keep on doing what you're good at and improving what you're good at and what your talent is. If you're talented, you can improve. If you're not talented, you're not going to get talent. You're not going to learn talent. You can't teach yourself talent. You have to just work on what you're good at. So if you're good at something, do it and push it and you'll be amazing. Thank you for joining me for episode 135 of The Daily Mother Swole. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday fun day. I'll see you tomorrow for 12 noon Eastern time. Soul Normous Premium members, remember... We have an accountability meeting tomorrow at 1 p.m., so I'll see you all there as well. Thank you for joining. You can follow me on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Musical.ly, everywhere that you want the information, everywhere that you want to find the Soul Normous. Just type in my username, and you'll see me. All right, I'll see you tomorrow at 12 noon, 12 noon Eastern Time. 12 noon Eastern Time for episode 136 of The Daily Swole. Peace out. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday fun day.